Hi, welcome to Clarify. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please hit the subscribe button. Today, let's take a look on how some metals react with an aqueous solution of copper sulfate. Let's start by filling up this test tube with the pre-prepared copper sulfate solution, which is blue in color. Now we'll be adding our first metal, a magnesium strip, into the test tube. As you can see, magnesium reacts readily with the copper sulfate. We can observe a gas being released as the magnesium strip reacts with the solution. Can you see the reddish brown particles forming around the magnesium strip and precipitating in the test tube? Stick around and you will find out what it is. Let's try another reaction, shall we? Pieces of zinc, not as reactive as magnesium. But I'm sure you would have noticed the reddish brown deposit on the pieces of zinc. Here comes the next, a very familiar metal, iron. Doesn't seem to be reacting, huh? Well, science does require a lot of patience. Let's give it some time to get along with their chemistry. In the meanwhile, let's try out the next, a lead wire. This also doesn't seem to react that quickly. But wait, don't jump to conclusions. Look. There's a small white cloud forming around the lead wire. The reason why they reacted at different speeds are because of the reactivity series. Magnesium is the most reactive of them, while zinc is also highly reactive, but not as much as magnesium. Then comes iron, and lead comes almost at the end of the series. But did you notice where copper is? It is below all these elements. Have a look at this now. These types of reactions are called displacement reactions. Since all these metals are higher above copper in the reactivity series, they have displaced the copper ion in the solution and have taken its place. Magnesium reacted with the copper sulfate solution and displaced the copper and produced magnesium sulfate. You can see that the blue color in the solution has reduced and the brown precipitate deposited at the bottom has increased. Zinc has reacted with the copper sulfate solution and has become colorless. Zinc and the copper sulfate has reacted to produce copper and zinc sulfate. Look at the iron nail, it's completely surrounded by copper and the solution has turned a shade pale green. Iron reacts with copper sulphate to produce an aqueous iron sulphate and copper which is deposited around the iron nail. However, we don't see any significant reaction in this. The lead has not reacted much with the copper sulphate solution. Lead sulfate is an insoluble solid which does not dissolve in the copper sulfate solution. Let's filter the solutions to have a better look at the precipitates. Magnesium readily reacted with the solution displacing the copper metal. The reddish brown powder here is copper. Zinc reacted with copper and this is the precipitate we are left with. The copper has deposited around the zinc granules. The brown deposit covering the iron nail is copper. The solution has turned a shade of pale green as a result of the iron sulfate produced. Can you see the particles of lead sulfate suspended around the lead wire? Due to this, further reaction on the lead is being halted. Therefore, not a lot of copper precipitates here. Which chemical reaction would you like for us to do in our next video? Leave your suggestions in the comment section below. 
Don't forget to subscribe our channel.